Okay, so here we are. Uh, since there's been so much talk about um, solar panels and putting them on A-liners, um, I decided I would go ahead and um, do a little video and give a full explanation of what my setup is since I've had a lot of questions. Um, so, um, what I want to do is just a little video show you how things are operating and then um, a bunch of still close-up pictures so that you can see how the whole thing is installed. So here is my 2018 Inliner Classic um, with off-road package and two soft dormers. Um, I already put the A-frame up. Everybody knows how that A-frame goes up and how easy it is. Um, so let's go ahead and um, I'll show you the sol solar panels. Um, those are two 100 watt solar panels um, installed on the dormer of the A-frame. The dealer and I went back and forth on this on how to install them and what the ramifications would be and um, I want to compliment um, Warren Keeley at Road Trip Camping for coming up with the design and the installation. Um, so. Uh, basically, um, we wanted it uh, mounted so that it would be permanent. Um, we went back and forth through discussions on what's better, um, whether it is um, uh, portable, uh, whether I wanted to use the ZAMP uh, plug, um, and so forth. Well, one of the benefits of actually buying a camper from somebody that does a lot of camping is you can get a lot of insight on possibly how they would use it, how they camp, and and uh, you have to decide how you're going to camp and what um, your ultimate goal is. So basically here are the two 100 watt panels. Um, they are installed on brackets with the, uh, with the little L bracket there. And these are made so that I can unbolt them and slide them off um, the uh, roof panel if, if I need to in the future. The wiring, you don't see any wiring or any entrance points on top. Um, the wiring comes out of the top of the solar panels and comes around and then at the hinge and meets with the... Uh, the main roof of the A-frame and then runs down near the, near the hinge um, and down the front and then it goes underneath and there are some other pictures to show you exactly how that occurs. Now one of the things that I think um, was done because there was some, some concern about whether the whether the hinge would support additional weight um, and how the roof would work because remember you're dealing with a piece of styrofoam with laminate on each side so these things are not going to take a lot of pounding you're not going to be able you can't go up there and stand on these things and jump around um, so structural integrity, integrity was important so as you see, this bracket goes from top to bottom, and later on there's a picture of the inside where there's a matching aluminum strip on the inside, and they are through bolted and sealed. And this way you are sandwiching the styrofoam between the, um, uh, between the two uh, metal brackets. And you are spreading the load across the entire roof of the, <coughs> excuse me, across the roof of the camper. Um, I don't know whether that is standard or whether, um, whether that, uh, extra metal plate was put on there. Uh, one of the concerns was that the, since the hydraulic lifts are going to be carrying more weight, um, that the, 
mounting points may be insufficient, so I, I can't really tell you at this point. You'd have to look at your camper to see whether they have those um, additional metal plates on there. Now, some people have expressed concern of with the extra weight, whether the hydraulic cylinders are enough. Um, those are the standard cylinders. And we will show you how this is working. So as you can see, it does hold itself up. Okay, I do not have to hold it up. Now, I believe before the panels were on there, it did go up by itself. And if you look closely, it is still going up by itself but at a much slower rate so that it does hold the roof up. Then you can go inside and you can put the push it up all the way and you can press the um, the support poles in place. Now on the inside We have the metal brackets on the inside. As you see, they're through bolted. They are through bolted. Okay, and I'm going to turn the light on there. Now we've moved the battery from the tongue of the trailer, and actually, I had those replaced with two AGM batteries. Why AGM? Well, they last a lot longer. Um, they don't put off gases because they are sealed and you can install them inside. Whereas a regular uh, wet battery you cannot put inside because it does give you some off gassing. So we went with two AGM batteries to match the um, solar panels. There is the controller system. And I have one AGM battery. Uh, mounted under the uh, dinette seat on one side and the other AGM battery is mounted on the other side. Now one issue I have is there's the porta potty. Um, the door on the A-liner is about a half an inch too low to slide the porta potty in and out and we're going to be working on that to modify that so the porta potty can be slid out just by opening up that front door. Now, the, and I will get you the specs on the different, on the controller that I'm using. Um, but it does have Bluetooth capabilities and I am able to tie in with that with my smartphone. And it does keep history so I can look at the history of what's been happening with the batteries, um, how they're charging, what their current state is whether the system is um, how, how much uh, uh, power the solar panels is putting into the um, system. Now what I have found is that once I have the refrigerator cooled down, and, and that's the key, once the refrigerator is cooled down, I can switch it over to 12 volt. And I normally cool it down by plugging it in a day ahead of time and turning it on. And um, some people talk about putting ice blocks in there and all kinds of things. Well, I actually, I don't know if they're in there. They're not. I actually put some uh, ice trays full of water in there. And when those ice trays are frozen, I know that we're good to go. Um... So once the thing has cooled down and has made some ice, I will then switch it over to 12 volt and, and typically unplug the shore power and start packing and get ready to go. What I have found is that I can run the refrigerator solely off of the solar system, the solar panels, um, you know, provided we have some good sun um, for... I, my test was um, for almost a week, 
Now you got to remember if you have cloudy days and so forth you're not going to have as much uh, power coming out of the solar panels but with 200 watts and the two AGM batteries there seems to be plenty of excess power where um, at some point when I'm looking at um, the graph on my Bluetooth app the solar panels are actually generating enough power to not only power the refrigerator but they are also maintaining the batteries so once the refrigerator is cooled down it takes very little power to um, to actually maintain that setting um, although I do have to remind uh, my son to not sit there with the refrigerator open all the time now I have basically after many discussions with people that go boondocking and so forth and I originally thought that I needed a 115 volt inverter and finally decided that I needed to look at this a little bit differently and basically start powering look at all my appliances and everything that I do from a 12 volt, stand, 12 volt standpoint so as part of this I've installed this panel which has three 12 volt power points like a cigarette lighter and it does have another um, cap that you lift off and it has two USB ports in there it also has an on off switch and currently it tells me that there's 3.2 volts coming across the system which is good okay now I don't know why a liner on the classic I don't know about the other units but they have not put any USB ports in and I find that most of the stuff that I'm getting for camping uh, is chargeable with USB ports like lanterns uh, radios <clears throat> um, you name it I have yet to find a 12 volt coffee grinder or a uh, solar powered coffee grinder so if anybody finds one please let me know I took out the original uh, 12 volt power point that also had the um, TV coax uh, on there because I do not plan on watching TV <clears throat> or at least much TV and I replaced that with two USB with a different unit that has a 12 volt power point and two USB ports so I can be here in the bed charging my phone overnight and so forth I did leave the cable oh. and there's my towel rack well I did leave the cable inside so that if I ever need to hook up to cable I do still have the cable in there I'll probably do something different with that later on but right now I just unscrewed it from the back of the connector and just left it inside the cabinet um, <clears throat> as far as the microwave goes um, you possibly could use the microwave if you had a let's say a thousand or fifteen hundred watt inverter um, not really much chance of using the AC for more than a few minutes because they draw so much power so for that I do have another video where I tested out a uh, little portable generator like a Honda and um, it's made by a power you can get it online or you can get it at Costco for less than 400 bucks so we'll see how that goes um, so the only time I bring the generator is when I'm not going to, I know I'm not going to have shore power available and uh, I'm going to want to run the air conditioner. Um, at this point, if I were to order this, special order this from the factory, I probably would not get a microwave. I would have this set up as storage, just as a cabinet. Um, because I don't really visualize myself using a microwave on, the, uh, on camping trips. Um, so, 
so that's that. Um, now again, this has stayed up. And it goes down nicely and latches nicely. Okay. Now, my concern was weight, not only weight and space. Um, when I decide to tow it with this moose, no problem. Don't even know it's there. However, if I'm deciding that I'm going to go off-roading, uh, basically I want to use the uh, A-frame as a um, base station. We're going to pull it with this. And since we are at the close to the max load of the towing weight for this vehicle, um, we took some special precautions. Uh, one is, is that we're very diligent about how we pack. Um, weight was uh, a concern. And I also use a Reese, um, a Reese hitch uh, that is equalizer and anti-sway hitch. Um, it's a little bit pricey. I think it was about four or five hundred dollars for that thing. But I can tell you that anybody that wants to tow with a light vehicle or a Jeep should always have that. And I find um, if you are a Jeep owner, you, you know that they're not the smoothest riding things or the best handling things. And I find that when I'm hooked up to the trailer with this Reese anti-sway um, load leveling uh, hitch on the back, the Jeep actually rides and handles a, a lot better than it normally would. So I'm very happy about that. And I have no problem uh, running down the road at um, 60 miles an hour. Um, there's no sway. There's no bounce. Um, no, don't worry about turns. Uh, the big issue with Jeeps is that I don't know about the new ones, but the old ones uh, never came with a 7-pin connector. Um, that was a little bit much, uh, a little bit tricky having to install that. Had to get the whole kit and put that in. Um, whereas the other vehicle was already set up for it and uh, the only thing I had to do was uh, hook up a couple wires uh, and splice in the controller um, uh, cable. So <clears throat> now in a couple weeks we're going to be traveling for a week. Um, Gonna leave Sunday, go camping in Virginia for two days, um, two two nights, two days, three days, one night, or sorry, two nights, three days. Come back the third day, spend the night at home. Then we're gonna switch over to the Jeep, um, repack the uh, unit, and um, we're going out to um, Ocean City for Jeep Week, and spend. Um, Wednesday through Sunday out there. So we're gonna, in one case in Virginia, we're not gonna have um, uh, power available and we're gonna be in the trees. So I'll um, let you guys know how that works. And then um, probably when we go out to Ocean City, we're gonna be at a campground which has um, electrical hookups so uh, we can run the air conditioner. Obviously it's August, I am um, getting a little bit pickier as I get older and I want AC. So now, one of the things that I have noticed um, guys is that when I run the air conditioner um, on uh, the generator, so I have, the, I have the shore power plugged into the generator um, and Sometime during the night, uh, one night, the generator ran out of fuel and turned off. Well, and we didn't wake up. 
which was fine because I had the propane was turned on at that point because we had cooked dinner the night before and the propane tanks were still turned on the refrigerator had automatically switched over to propane when it detected the loss of uh, the power from the generator at 115 volt I don't know yet whether it will automatically detect if the propane is turned off and whether it would switch from the 115 to the um, 12 volt automatically so that's another test that we're gonna run so anyway I'm not saying that's the best this is the best setup I'm not saying that this is the setup that will work for you this is an option I have seen other setups on YouTube that look equally um, dependable I have also seen those that like to have the portable um, panels that they can move around um, and uh, they use the Renergy, plug, Renergy, Renergy or Zamp plug on the side and um, set the panels up um, but if you notice uh, anybody that has those they are out there adjusting those things every day um, these panels basically as you can see they sit at about a 45 degree angle so they get a lot of sun um, and once the dormer is up they're pointed straight up so they're getting a lot of sun during the daylight and what I'm going to do is um, I'll stop the video and I will take a picture I will um, attach my Bluetooth it is uh, the evening here and the Sun is setting and I will show you the statistics on what the panels are doing under this under this type of light it is the Sun is over there setting and you'd be surprised when you have that much solar panel on there how much excess um, uh, excess uh, power you get through these panels even if they're only running at 20 percent 10 20 percent um, so I'm going to go ahead and turn this off um, at the end of the video will be a bunch of pictures of the installation and uh, I'm going to show you right now the um, the statistics that come across on the screen when I attach the Bluetooth so if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. Again, um, just be careful when you're dealing with this stuff. You are dealing with voltage. Um, if you do hook things up wrong, I'm sure bad things can happen. Um, but so far, mine sits out here uh, turned on, and it maintains the battery. So anytime I step into, into it, I've got fully charged batteries. Now, when you are hooked to your tow vehicle, obviously, your tow vehicle is helping to um, charge the um, batteries on the uh, in the uh, camper along with the solar panels um, which I look at as a plus that I never have to plug into dead batteries especially with the Jeep because it has the standard alternator in there and is probably not to pre not prepared to be running at full blast all the time to try and charge two AGM batteries um, and by the way the Jeep has an AGM battery in it also so that um, because I have a winch and so forth on there and some accessories um, so when I am towing with the Jeep I am dealing with all AGM batteries so again if you have any questions um, don't hesitate to contact me and I know somebody's going to ask so that is a bike rack there are two additional wings that go on there and it carries two um, uh, carries two bikes however if you're going to put one of these on your a-liner since um, this was recommended to me as one of the most sturdy bike racks you can put um, and it is mounted to the tongue um, so you're not adding additional weight to the back you're not hooking to the bumper which typically has to be reinforced in the back if you're gonna uh, put a bike rack there but be aware that you will have to change the jack 
This is a front crank jack and a liner typically comes with a side crank jack. So that will be an additional expense or you have to go to an electric jack. Um, so both of those things had to occur but this does hold two um, bikes nicely and when the bikes are on there you can typically and this is one of the reasons why I picked the A-liner in this setup is that you can leave the vehicle um, attached and the bikes mounted and um, you can raise the dormer if you want and as far as security goes underneath I have a toy lock which has a 25 foot cable steel cable on it that is mounted to the frame and with the lock so you pull that out you wrap it around the bikes your generator or whatever and you lock that so that um, it'll make something more difficult to take away if somebody tries to do that but my toy lock is mounted there underneath the propane pain tanks and when I need it um, I can use it so uh, typically if I'm camping um, I may store my generator right there it does fit where the old battery rack went however I do not run the generator in that position because of these bad boys so the toy lock is big enough where I can set the generator anywhere within about a 20 foot radius of the tongue of the um, trailer um, I can set it on the back side I can set it out front I can set it you know anywhere I want and run the generator and it is away from the uh, propane tanks and, and the camper it's not up against the camper so all right so there you have it there are going to be some pictures that are going to be added to this post um, and Good luck to you. If you have any questions, just hit me up.